All right, what's going on traders? This is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Today, one of our moderators, Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in MIC chat, does a daily recap for us uh, explaining his long trade on MBIO. And while today is just a preview, if you want to watch the full length video or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. All right, let's get into it. Hey everybody, Austin here. Back for another trade recap, but before I do, I want to say I'm not licensed, I'm not registered, not a financial advisor, and none of this should be taken as investment advice, even if it sounds like it. Okay, so today, um, uh, I only traded MBIO. It was kind of a slow day for me. I didn't want to participate in RHE. Uh, I felt like I kind of missed the initial move, and I didn't want to chase it up. I didn't have shorts on it. So I just kind of left it alone all day. And MBRX, too. I didn't like the in initial range. Like I, I typically don't like to trade stocks under two dollars so like I, I <clears throat> this was the only kind of stock I had on radar to trade today and so it's all I traded but um if you remember like yesterday uh, I had a I had a trade on uh, MBIO I tried to get a first bounce out of it like trying to buy here at around this uh, 840 level and it failed I tried again down here it worked for a little bit and I ended up stopping out um, half or break even and so I was pretty much done with it there. And part of the thesis of today's trade comes from yesterday's trade. So if you look at the daily chart, we had this huge wick, huge sell-off candle, and you can see it um, yesterday, big range. And um, and we we, op we we closed right at lows, which gives every short um, the confidence and uh, willpower to hold this stock overnight. And I imagine a whole lot of people did. And this is where uh, the thesis kind of originated for this trade. Was that it was, um, it, it sold off huge yesterday. And um, what I'm going to be looking for is a reason for the shorts to say, hey, this could be bottoming out here. And so, so I, I figured that everyone going into today was going to be thinking, fade, 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 continue, 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 follow through, follow through, follow through, you know, more down, like it sold off so hard, look at how much room this has to go, you know, this could go back to four, three fifty, threes even, like this has so much more room to come down, why wouldn't you hold for it? So I, I just had a, I had a suspicion that a lot of shorts were in the stock, it was so nice to them too, every pop got sold, every pop got sold, every pop got sold, it was easy to borrow, like I just I couldn't see shorts not holding this overnight. So that was a big part of the uh, the thesis behind this trade. So we closed here at lows and um, we kind of opened right here in no man's land, which kind of made this trade. That was the toughest part of this trade. Uh, well, second toughest part of this trade. I'll, I'll get I'll get to the toughest part later. But one of the toughest parts of this trade was I didn't really have a solid level, which I normally like to go on. Like I like to have a solid level, like. If this level, if this would have gapped down to five, that would have been like that would have made it kind of easier to decide if I was going to trade it or not, because five is such a whole psychological number. Like it's it's easy for me to t like I can tell if price action is going to tell me are we holding five or not, right? Important levels to me seem like six, six thirty, you know, four fifty, um, and five dollars is that whole psychological number that I just talked about, like. If it had opened at one of those levels, it would have been kind of easier in a sense. But um, yeah, so let's get into it. So shorts are shorts are comfortable, and this is this kind of falls into that uh, quote that I that I made up that like trade when things that should happen don't. Right? That's when you pull the trigger when when something that should happen or is reasonably or can be reasonably expected should happen. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.